What's up, everybody? This is Grant at Cause Artist. Welcome to episode 104 of the Disruptors for Good podcast. Today, I'm super excited for you to hear Wes Hurt, the founder of Clean Cause. Clean Cause produces organic, sparkling yerba mate with low or zero calories with all natural caffeine. But the big, big part of all this is 50% of their profits support individuals in recovery. It's an incredible story, powerful, motivating, inspiring, really amazing story. Wes goes into some pretty personal details about his journey along the way in starting the company and, and scaling it to where it is now. To date, Clean Cause has granted over 2,100 scholarships representing more than $1 million. The scholarships are available anywhere in the United States where the company is sold. If you know someone in your community who is in need, you can have them apply for a sober living scholarship today through the Clean Cause website. We will link down below uh, for ease of access there. I really hope you enjoy the conversation and hope everyone is staying, staying safe and healthy. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. I appreciate it so much, Wes, for, for taking the time, man. Uh, I've been a, been a fan for a while of, of you and the team and, and the company and the cause and everything you've been, been up to these past years. Uh, so I want to say just first of all, say congrats on the success and the journey. I know it's been a long one for you personally. Um, and that's kind of where, where I'd like to start, man, is just, you know, a little bit of your personal journey before you decide to, to start Clean Cause. Because, you know, obviously that's, that's an important journey that, that you took, maybe an unfortunate one, but it, it sort of, you know, it really bred some, some amazing things going on at this point. So walk us through the, the early journey before you, you started the company. Yeah, man. Well, Grant, thanks for having me, dude. I appreciate it. I mean, any opportunity to spread the, the cause and what we're trying to do and build is uh, we have gratitude. It's, so thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, my name's Wes. I, you know, I'm a father of two boys. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I, uh, I live in Austin, Texas. Um, I'm a person in recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. In, in terms of how the journey or how Clean Cause came about and a little bit about my history, I um, lived in Austin the vast majority of my life. I'm 43 years old. I graduated high school in the late 90s. Like most folks, I experimented in different social circles and with different substances. Nothing too, too, too heavy. They're all there's, there's, deg there's degrees, though. Sure. Yeah, there, there are degrees, but I don't want to diminish so that you give somebody out there the license to go use uh, addiction light. No, but anyway, uh, it's none of my damn business. You know, but in high school, started experimenting like most. Um, you know, I always had um, this inferiority slash insecurity slash, you know, how I like to say it is I'm, I'm an egomaniac with low self-esteem, you know, and I've been like that my entire life. And uh, there's reasons why that I've been able to go back. You know, in short, I needed and, and I chose to medicators because I didn't want to feel uh, those insecurities and anxieties of life and pick that up pretty early as kind of my uh, survival mechanism. Um, in retrospect, I can see a lot of these things pretty clearly. But, um, you know, so I graduated high school, went off to college. You know, I went to eight different, it was eight years. I went, lived in four different states all kinds of craziness uh, during my college career, if you will. But over that time, I was just slowly increasing my dependency on alcohol and then starting to mix in some harder drugs on a, on a greater frequency and, and beyond the normal partying of college. And so somehow, you know, well, you know, eight years. So that's how I somehow, it just took time, graduated college, moved on, started my first business after a long run of, um, let me back up, throughout all that my addiction spans for 20 years um, from high school and then 20 years forward. And so, you know, if you, if you had a, a little line graph, it just, it was a curve that just slowly kept going up. It wasn't a linear line. It, it accelerated pretty quickly. And, and um, what that looked like for me was I launched my first business, which was a cupcake business. We launched these cupcake stands all over Austin. And at that point, my addiction was daily drinking, doing cocaine multiple times a week, just trying to keep things the wheels from falling off, like barely. It was really just survival um, in the sense right, of the right. My personal life, but the journey of business was was starting to thrive. In the irony of that, now, so huh. yeah, it was weird, um, you know. And, and 
but the addiction kept growing. Fast forward seven years of building that business, it was pretty successful. Um, but it, towards the end of the, that, the last year or so, I picked up opiates. I, I was never really a fan of opiates before. I don't know, maybe somebody didn't give me the right one or something. I don't know. Right, I, right. I don't really discriminate when something can help me feel something. Other right, than right, whatever. yeah. You know, so so I picked up opiates and started with one uh, one pill. And I, you know, over um, eighteen months, two years, accelerated to about thirty to 30, thirty to forty pills in that range a day. Oh, Popping those in the morning, it was crazy. I was thinking about the other day. I used to wake up at like eight a.m. I'd have little withdrawals. I'd go to the corner store, chew up ten Vicodin, uh, and slam two beers. And Jeez. and and then about. Um, you know, about a minute and a half later, I would just get this shiver through my body and I'd be like, okay, I can, uh, I can go to life. I can go play life today. Wow. And so, you know, it was crazy looking back. Um, and then, so that accelerated to that. And then, uh, you know, to, to 30 to 40 biking in a day, you know, I hadn't pushed over to heroin or any of the other drugs quite yet, or I didn't because I still had money. And typically, you know, mm -hmm. the, the migration from pills or opiates to heroin is because of financial need. It's it's less expensive and get on the streets, blah, blah, blah. My point is I was able to sustain still using pills and I just kept scaling those up. So I never stepped over quite, you know, didn't step over it. And, and that was really what I attributed to. Otherwise I would have. At the very end of the business, everything was shit. Other mm -hmm. than the business, I was, um, you know, kicked out of my home. Everybody in my life said, uh, we, we can't, we're not going to support you in dying anymore. And they, they aligned against, uh, they, they said, tough love, you got to go. So I was kicked out of the house. My wife, you know, kicked me out, changed the locks, the business, I was fired from it. Everybody in my life that I loved wow. um, aligned and I had no one. I was homeless for a couple months. I lived in a warehouse office with another homeless guy. It was a dark time in my life. I was hanging out in a cemetery every day, wanting to kill myself. I was in this position of what I've now learned to understand is kind of this liminal space. It's the space between what was and what is to come, but you you really don't know which direction you're going. And, and so it was weird. I was in this space of limbo where I did not want to live and I didn't want to die. Fast forward a little bit more. I wake up, or I'm, I'm laying there one night, my heart's beating insanely. I've popped as many Vicodin as I can stomach. I've smoked as much crack as I can. I thought I was going to die. Uh, not that day, but that I had clarity for the first time. I'm like, dude, I might die. And mm. so I, I called my um, my ex and I just said, hey, you know, I think I'm going to die soon. And, and, and for some reason, she heard it differently that day and, and said, if you want to get sober, come home right now. Um, I looked over at the other homeless guy I was living with and told him uh, she's telling me to come home and uh, and he said uh, go mm -hmm. and so so I went so I went and that was the beginning of my uh, so this this version of my sober journey you know just a little history on my addiction stuff I've been to six rehabs one psych ward lived in multiple states ended up in countries you know Belize and Mexico and just just the insanity that addiction brings um, and kind of the impulsivity and all of the uh, just crazy. One thing I'll say, though, is and you mentioned it earlier, and, and I'll come back to it a little bit later, which was speaks to my journey and, you know, how much of a nightmare it, it looks if, if it didn't end it or, or if it wasn't a means to a means, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it would be a tragedy. I, I am so grateful for it is the truth because I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the purpose as, as explicit as I do. And um, but it's a big time blessing. I feel like I've won the lottery. The only thing I uh, regret are the people I hurt along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of my background and kind of, um, you know, really sets the stage for, for why I started Clean Cause. I think it's, <laughs> well, from, from Cupcakes, I guess the, the first initial question I, I, I would have is, I guess, why the sector of beverages? Yeah, you know, I don't know how methodical I've ever been, especially when you're still detoxing off of drugs and stuff. Sure. I, mean, I, I am highly logical, actually, and methodical, but um, I'm also sporadic, and, you know, it's just kind of a mix. <laughs> I call it shit smoothie. You know, it's kind of like, there's a lot of good ingredients in there, but if you use any one of them out of proportion, it tastes like shit. Mm -hmm. all, we all want some spirulina and all of those crap I can't even say. I don't even know what it does, but I want some. You know, when I look at it, I say the idea of beverage didn't come first. This, this company and this, this, uh, the mission, it, this was founded on purpose. Mm -hmm. it, so it the purpose mission. came first before the idea it, of the beverage. Side. 50% of our profits go to support individuals in recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. You know, I knew I could use my story for good. And I knew that I needed more explicit purpose for myself. Mm -hmm. I needed a North Star. 
And, and, you know, so it was really clear when it came to me and kept marinating, I was like, we need to do something. Um, you know, a lot of companies um, have give back initiatives, yep. um, but, but we wanted to signal to the consumers and to, to our culture that it was our reason for being. Yep. And, you know, it's such a difference, man. It's such a difference. Yeah. It, it, and so, so the mission started and then the name came, the clean cause came and then the product. Interesting. So we, knew, we knew what we were going to do with the mission. We knew what the name was because we knew it was marketable. It double entendre and it was powerful and, mm-hmm. and, it, and it came about a really cool way, which I won't go into, but, and then to answer your question, how do we choose beverage? Why do you want to go into CPG with this car? <laughs> And, and so forth. And, you know, I had had a little experience, you know, years and years ago, 15 years ago from an internship I had done in a little company. You know, I like interacting with people. I like uh, industries that don't have a ceiling mm. that I see very easily. I like to pick big markets. Addiction is a big problem and a big problem Huge. requires a big solution. And a, and a big solution requires big money and, and big money requires you to play in the big markets or, <laughs> or, or have patents or some other thing. Right. Uh, the cupcake business definitely uh, cut my teeth in CPG and the idea behind food and beverages. Um, but again, I you can reach the masses. And, you know, oftentimes I look at, you know, Clean Cause is a can with a plan. We wanted a product that could stand on its own merit and reach the masses. But, it, you know, of sorts, if you really think about it, the can is really just a vehicle to deliver yep. the plan. Yep. which is the mission and which is to reach the masses. And furthermore, you know, and, and to back up just a teeny, our model was always, our vision was to build a model that was sustainable yeah. in and of itself. It could feed itself because, you know, through consumers' wallets, that's how they vote for the cause and the impact that we can change our culture. We're, I see us as a private solution for a public problem. And, yep. and, and what I want to say is that that's not from arrogance. It's from a preference of, of um, how I believe the best economic or business model should be set up where they have purpose that's meaningful and impact. Because if it's true and it's, and people buy into it and the efficacy is there, they'll vote, they'll vote with their dollars. It was key to us. It was built on mission first. It was built to have a sustainable, to be a sustainable model that can stand the test of time on its own self-sufficiency and, and the products could stand on their own merit aside from the cause yep. because we didn't want this to be some cliche brand that someone yep. slapped the cause on and it couldn't stand on its t- own two feet. So it's, yeah. it's huge. Perfectly said. When we say 50% of sales revenue, does that, are you working with like local nonprofits in Austin, nonprofits across the country? Yeah. What, is that, what does that look like from the back end, right? When consumers buy something, sure. what happens on the back end? One thing more philosophically, it's important to me to mention is, you know, when I started this, you know, I'm just getting sober and I'm telling people I want to give half the profits away and I'm asking investors for money and I'm saying, <laughs> I'm just getting sober, give me a lot of money and I'm going to give half of your money away. Like, right. this, it's not a badass sales pitch, uh, you know? <laughs> But gratefully, we were able to find investors who were so aligned with the mission and, and understood that this was going to take a lot of money, but that they believed in it and giving that you receive. And so when you look at the back end of this, you know, first of all, it was alignment of mission with the people that were supporting this. So you have to commit because yep. and the reason I say that is we're in a society of cynicism, of skepticism claims that people make and and people asked me at the beginning like dude you're not giving that are you really going to give that and all those things and i was like all of your concerns or questions are saying are valid be- and they're valid because of what came before us why wouldn't you be skeptical mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you should be but our mission and our goal is to give as much transparency as possible while maintaining the integrity and, and um, of the cause and our investors and um, really our long-term vision. And so um, a couple different things about this. Sorry about that. That was the philosophical. Now more specifics. Half of our profits go to support people in recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. We allocate this on a monthly basis. Mm. Furthermore, 
one thing that was really important to us was that I see us as a um, national brand with a local give back initiative. And that's coined with one of our mottos of we give where you swig. So our partners, the consumers in your particular market, when you consume clean cause in Portland and you buy it there, you're fun, you are funding sober living scholarships for the people in your community. And huge, so there's huge. that direct and downstream and downstream effect for your your um, community and you know we we're just getting started and it's going to take time to build this critical mass however the seeds are being planted and again it was really important to us that consumers knew that their purchase was relevant and uh, impactful in their own communities and so, so to date we've we've granted over 2000 sober living scholarships representing over a million dollars wow uh, I'll speak to a nonprofit later and kind of what we're doing to to bolster the integrity of the cause to allow even more transparency. You know, our goal is to get everybody to buy into this like mm-hmm. fully because the truth is, it's like we don't have shit other than bubbles in a can without the cause. And yeah. I can't do my clean diapers I want to do one day if people right. don't believe in the cause and the integrity of it. That is what can stand the test of time. We can yep. create a brand worth billions and kick yep. off billions of dollars to be part of the solution, not the solution. It's important that we mention that because there's a humility, even though I'm an egomaniac with low self-esteem, to recognize us as being some sober prophet or myself or the brand to save the day. No, but we're going to kick some serious ass with our gifts, the resources we've been given and the badass people that have come along to support this mission. So I just wanted to emphasize that we don't think we're the solution. We're going to be part of one though, for damn sure. Yeah. But it, that, that's why the, it was so important how you branded because it's not just bubbles in a can in five years, 10 years, it might be, you know, diapers. It might be other, other products consumers can purchase, right? It's, it's amazing. Socks, whatever it may be. Right. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. Yeah, Grant. I mean, the thing is, is first of all, here's my ego maniac coming out. I'm like, it's not what it might be. It's going to be. Mm-hmm. We're going to do this and we're going to do it globally mm-hmm. because there are no borders to addiction. Uh, there's no discrimination. You know, I think addiction and recovery is actually one of the only causes in the world that you can more likely get people to be aligned with mm-hmm. because The only thing that qualifies you to support or be involved in the conversation is being affected by addiction or being an addict in recovery or being someone struggling. That's it. How how weird is that, that your price of admission to unification or unity is that you're getting rocked by something that's globally and that we all know. Skin color does not matter. Socioeconomics, demographic, all of that shit does not matter. So instead of me going out there and fighting the other battles that are out there, which I think are noble and needed, you know, and all these different things, if it's environmental, if it's political, if it's social, in terms of like, we've chosen to take on addiction and try to be a part of a solution of that because we believe it feeds every, we believe it's the Nile that feeds the tributaries of all of these other social issues. And and if you can go to the root cause and nip that shit or begin to support and arrest the, the, the development on the continuum of care for addiction, the downstream effect are the families, the children, the, the society, the jail systems, the, uh, the familial units, like every single thing we can think of is impacted by addiction and it can be impacted by recovery in the same way. That's the good news. Well, it's, it's, it's also great to have that focus too, right? And not try to do all these other causes that is not as close to or aligned with your mission as addiction or recovery is because the only way to get to that be a billion dollar company is to have obsessive focus on the one priority you do right and i think that is you guys have that and that's the biggest step right i mean having unflinching just, focus is amazing yeah i unflinching focus and another word i would use for that which is a really cool i like so i usually like to say things much more casually like that you know to me that's synonymous with resolve mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. you yep. have resolve you are unshakable with your resolve there's a couple of things I say, when in doubt, throw it out. You got to go with your gut. If you're not feeling it, forget it. 
I mean, all of these things that move us as humans are what cause us to either purchase something or click something or do something, which is what we're all trying to get somebody else to do. That's what we're doing. We're getting them. We want them to act. Well, why do you act? Why do I act? I act selfishly more often than not. It's something that makes me feel good. It's something that tastes good. It's something that covers my functional needs for caffeine in the morning. You know, to me, that's the recipe that we're looking to do. Give you something that you're already buying and, and give it to you even better, best in class. Make sure that the integrity and the product quality is there so that scratches that itch. And guess what? You are energizing recovery in America while you consume that can. And what's badass about uh, the way I like to think about it, and I, yes, there's a conflict of interest. I'm the founder, so I call things badass. My, I got, one of my friends goes like this. He's like, yeah, but you're always great in your own paper. And I'm like, ooh. Ouch. No, no, no. <laughs> what I was going to say is that it's you never fail that way though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 We're winning. I'm, I'm in 4.0, man. <laughs> you know, what, one thing you said, you know, you were speaking about the potential future of clean cause and, and kind of what we may envision for it. This is the tip of the iceberg. Um, I think there's a couple different missions. I think there's one is to um, galvanize uh, to build and then galvanize a business model that has all of the ingredients that other people can do it and feel really mm. good about it and understand that you can make way more money by giving it away. Yeah, It's true. It's yep. true. It's true. It's true. But beyond the money, which is what we typically associate with happiness, the joy, the fulfillment, contentment, serenity, all of these peace, all of these words that are subjective and kind of up in the air that we all seek. We all seek this as humans, but I, I'll speak for myself. I've, I'm looking in the wrong places mm. and I have been my whole life. You know, peace and serenity is right in front of us, man. You can look in the mirror and say, I have eyeballs today. I can breathe. Yep. I have my legs. I have food. I can choose what I want to eat today. I have a car. I can go wherever I want, more or less. I can't stay in the big badass places, but I can eat pretty much the same steak as Richie Rich. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my point is, is our life is beyond amazing. And, and I, I, I think it's difficult for me though, because I always want more, or I always think something else is going to fix me versus sitting in the present and saying, dude, I got way more than I ever would need. And I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, it's like, what the hell happened with all of us losing this YOLO shit? Mm -hmm. you know, once. Does, does that mean shit to us? Not really. Cause we don't act that way. Mm. You don't act like you only live once. If you own, if you believed you only lived once and you lived with that tenacity because you understood that time was scarce and that is the greatest asset you will ever have, you would act differently on the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going after that damn bucket list. Why do people do bucket lists? Because they're realizing their time is short. Why wouldn't we do that before we know we're going to die? <laughs> that make any sense. Anyway, so look, hey, it's easier said than done. Sure, sure. Some philosophical BS. It's not necessarily original thinking and it's not BS. Let me break it back. It's not BS. It's real. And I don't want to diminish it by saying that, which is something I'm getting better at. It's, it's real. And it's something I believe is a truth. Um, moving closer to that truth to understand that your life and time is your greatest asset. Dude, if you can get that straight and just recognize that that is a truth, no matter what, anything else, what other articles you read, mm -hmm. you can guide you if you start there i only have so much time so much i'm time. not guaranteed it when you talked about scholarships earlier does that does that sort of mean helping people pay for their time in yeah, yeah that's recovery great, yeah that's a great it's a great question um you know i think when Whenever you're too close to something for too long, it's like smelling a cologne or something like yeah. that. You can't smell it anymore. It, you can't see the forest from the trees, you know? And so what's been interesting is this brand and the cause and what it means and how we represent ourselves outside of the mission never being compromised or changed in the, in the give back initiative was this idea that we were building a plane as we were flying it. Mm. And so when you look at like, what is the need in the continuum of care? What is a sober living scholarship? What's the idea? So the reason I chose sober living scholarship was that I went back to root cause. I went back to the simple, the same way we just spoke about scarcity of time. And if you start with that, it could guide your decisions thereafter. In the same way, what are the practical needs for people that are struggling with addiction and recovery? Well, let's start with Maslow, you know, food, shelter and stuff. So people getting out of jail, coming off the streets or coming out of rehab typically don't have a place to go other than the environments they were already yep. in. Yep. So 
we're jumping over this very practical thing that speaks to people's places and things and all the places that I did. If I went straight back to the place I was, the odds are I'm not going to stay sober. So, so, so to me, there's a couple different ways to speak about sober living scholarship. A, it's intended to be a safe um, environment, safe and supportive environment that will afford the individual an opportunity to focus on establishing recovery, uh, recovery routine and getting a job. Huge. You know? Those two things to build self-esteem, nothing builds self-esteem like esteemable acts. And so, you know, it's just about action. And so, and um, so I see it as a bridge from rehab to reintegration. It's a kickstart. It's a space for grace. It's an idea of, of being able to keep that support when you get off the street or you come out of rehab or you come out of jail and you're like, damn, dude, I want life now. Mm. I want, boom, next step, supportive, keep going. But dude, that's just the next step of the journey. And that's why I'm feverishly going after this because it's like, damn, dude, the need's so much greater. And, and so what happens after the Sober Living Scholarship? So to your yep. point, we do $500 Sober Living Scholarships that go towards a 30 day, 30 day stay in a sober living uh, house. Again, there's accountability in them is what we seek for. It's difficult because we can't monitor all these or be big brother necessarily. Sure. Which is stuff we're going to be working on to improve the efficacy and visibility and, and clarity of um, actually the results of our, our initiative. Yeah. That, yeah. That was, What's happening here? I mean, yeah. I would love to be able to tell you this morning, hey man, 17% um, of people who go to sober living for just 30 days, uh, stay sober right. average another year and a half. That's what we're shooting for. And we're going to get that. But um, yeah, that speaks to what the initiative is. Very practical. Yep. Shelter, safety, support. Let's fucking go. I think uh, one thing scale can provide too, eventually, is if you get to that certain point is that, you know, maybe you have some sort of warehouse in these in these areas and they can sort of graduate from the sober living house that consumers help, you know, provide for them into a job at the clean cause warehouse right in that community that's to me is the sort of utopian ecosystem that Dude, this could eventually happen i love it and it, i mean i i i say virtuous cycle and utopian like mm -hmm. that's kind of how it is but this virtual cycle of hey just keep bringing people in i mean here here's a crazy story for you really quickly to speak to that sure. so about three years ago or something they, timelines are pretty shitty for me. I just, sure. I, probably around three years ago, um, we, we, we helped somebody get to Austin. It was a little outside of our normal give back, but we helped them get here. They were really desperate. They got sober and this is all just, it took time. This is over years. They got sure. so They started two sober living homes. Um, wow. They married, uh, had a child, had another one that was four months pregnant. And uh, the, the mom was four months pregnant. And this uh, July 3rd, he went out and overdosed and died. Um, mm. And, you know, but, but here's the kicker. The story's not over. And that's the deal, dude. Because to me, there's two different things when it comes to recovery. We talk about a lot about what you don't do versus what you can do. We talk a lot about, about running from something versus running to something. We talk a lot about, you know, you know, the shame or a date and all this shit about what has happened versus realizing that your life's not guaranteed tomorrow. And while I believe in the dates and it's a badge of honor and a way for people to stay accountable and feel proud of themselves, you know, um, looking ahead is more important than what's behind. And so just to, to circle back to what happened in this situation, because what we were speaking about is this virtual cycle, cycle almost this ecosystem mm -hmm. that you start to build out more um, components. So it can have more vertical integration, more continuity, um, more complete and holistic. And so I had someone reach out to me, the, the, the wife, and I said, hey, oh, yeah. I just said, hey, she reached out. I told her when he had passed away and uh, that, that I would support them in the way I could that was healthy and blah, blah, blah. You know, and she called me up on it, you know, about, you know, um, so it's July, you know, July 3rd is coming, it's coming up in about a month, his anniversary or whatever. And she hit me up a couple weeks ago. Uh, I said, look, we have an opportunity to honor, honor your husband and honor your children. And, um, you know, why don't you come work with us? And, mm. uh, and she's like, what jobs do you have open? And we don't have any, we'll create one. We'll create one. And, and the idea is I go, as long as it has value, which I know you can bring, and it's an easy, it's an easy creation we can do. But, um, you know, I talked to her this morning and, you know, we both have joy in our hearts um, with the opportunity to honor Joe, this guy and his life and his children mm. and not 
not me be the West that saves the day for women out there with children who've lost their husbands. No, you know, it's about when people pass away from overdose, everything that was good before mm. is still good. It's still good. Everything that was created that will live on after they're dead is still good. Everything that catalyzes someone that they were impacted or affected by, and they carry that on in their life and they change the way they connect with humans or what they create or what the career path is or what they care about is good. Mm. And so it's about honoring the spirit of those who left before and using that as an inspiration to press on. Not some just happy horse crap, but I mean it. You're doing that if you're thinking about them and then your energy is being used. It's real. That was That's one of the coolest things I've been able to experience in the last six years. And so I'm really grateful for that. But, you know, and half of our, half of our company is in recovery. One thing I want to say about recovery too, which is really interesting really quickly, because it's important to me, you know, there's a lot of emphasis. Uh, so there's, there's like addiction and then there's recovery and then there's staying in recovery. We know that these two parts are really hard, getting from addiction to recovery. Then we also know it's hard to fucking stay in recovery and it's hard to stay sane and figure out what your identity is. One thing that I've chosen personally um, to, and I say personally because I'm cautious not to represent clean on some of my, my personal beliefs because the, the power of clean is an open platform that's agnostic, inclusive, mm -hmm. open, inviting. It's not meant to be prescriptive. It's informative. And that's what our goal will be because, you know, we don't want to, any, anyway, so is she still at the company? What, what was the position that you ended up creating for? She starts today. Shut up. She yeah. starts, <laughs> literally starts today. Yeah, no joke. That's a cool moment. And then, dude, another one really quick, dude, I have to tell you because this, it, man. this speaks to the impact and the power and what I hope other people can see when they employ this kind of idea. And it doesn't have to be 50%. Yep. It's about, it's about the, the authenticity and sincerity of it and it being real. So yep. whatever it is, make it real. Yep. Don't think it's just marketing optics. That yep. will not work. I promise you because everybody does it. Yep. And so, and you know what? Nothing, you cannot sell to the human spirit. You cannot, it's you feel it with the eyeballs, with the words, people see it. That's what convinces people of authenticity, not your fucking words. Especially oh. now, man, like you've oh. seen it. I mean, there's just so every company now is social impact and sustainable and, and do good and all this other stuff. And then it's just like, it's incredibly fake and it, it's just disappointing because like you said, if you're going to say it, why not just do it? And or show us it so we can, so we can buy in and join yes, you. Yes, yes. So I can buy more of Miracle Grow because then you're sending miracle uh, seeds to Africa. Just show me the plants and time lapse growing and then someone grabbing an apple and going, shit, my purchase did that. Mm -hmm. But like, but where I feel it or I'm going to forget it. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's where that comes, man. It's like, come on. But look, again, this isn't to dog people. The whole, God, the whole idea is to inspire. Yeah. Is, to, is to think it through again because we're really close. We're really close. Mm -hmm. We're starting to mess, but we're like two plus two is five right now. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Two plus two is four. Hold the line. Hold the line. Hold the conviction. Start with mission first because it should be your compass and your north freaking star. And it's not BS. And it's not just because I watched the TED talk about your why and the big one. And, and it's not to just watch Renee Brown about vulnerability and the power. It's because you know that's what moves you. Come on, you know? And so I'm not, I'm not saying anything new. I'm regurgitating. But I, I think so, something back to what you said before and, and what I preach all the time is that our consumer dollar is, is so important. And it's important to other people, right? Look at all these people fighting to get your dollar, right? All these ads everywhere. You can't get everywhere, everywhere. Just marketing, marketing, sales, sales. Like they're why, why are they doing that? Why are they spending billions every year? Because your dollar is super important. And if you shift it a little bit, right? By purchasing better through companies you fucking believe in and are doing real shit. Guess yeah. what? Everything changes. Everything it, changes. Everything changes. And you know what's crazy about our society? We want a 30 day fix. We want mm. a, we want an Atkins diet shit or whatever it is. 
we want every new thing so it happens fast. You know, the beauty about this and something I learned recently because I've always wanted all or nothing. This guy that says, Wes, um, this isn't about a 360 degree shift, okay? This is not. This is about a two degree, two degree shift because if you yep. shift a yep. two degrees, only two degrees in 30 days, you will mm. be blind. And I was like, whoa, America needs to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not 360. We're, we're just showing you before and after pictures. Mm -hmm. But if I could just tell you that that before, that after picture can happen with a two degree shift in resolve at the front, mm. that becomes palatable, digestible to us because we're so damn all or nothing. Like the idea of a new year's resolution, why don't we do a new day's resolution? Because <laughs> we all got that within seven days. Mm. So why don't we re-up this intention daily knowing that we're going to fail because we're human and we fail. We lie. All of us lie. There's degrees of lying. Yes, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, is fallibility exists. We are human. And so here's the deal. And this is not to give people a license to relapse. If someone relapses, I don't give a shit. I care about the bounce back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I care about. I, we're going to fall. Everyone is in their own shit. And addiction is just my flavor of affliction. But if we focus on the fall and the shame that perpetuates yeah. and all that, we shouldn't even be trying to support people. Screw it. Because if there's no space and great for, for grace in this society, then go live on an island or I just need to go do whatever I want to do. Or, you know, it, the, the idea again, for me, again, for me, these are my opinions and what we will choose to focus on. And what I personally fo focus on is the great need corral around to, to support and to surround someone who's fallen and come to their aid quickly mm -hmm. and say, no shame is allowed. We are going to bounce back now because everything you did joe my buddy who passed in those three years before is still alive and it's still thriving and it's still moving forward so even though he died it still goes but if you live and you relapse i have one day one week three months and i put six years behind me three months sober three months relapse who can bounce back that's what matters. So find the people who believe in the bounce back in life in general. It's I'm fucking my career or whatever. I just got fired. Bounce mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. I just ate seven gallons of ice cream last night because I'm so damn depressed and I weigh 700 pounds. Bounce back. You know, that's it. You know, and you always heard that your whole life. It's not, you know, it's not about getting knocked down. It's about getting back up. Yeah, dust yourself off, but help somebody dust you. You, know, you can ask someone to help dust yourself off too. Mm. We can do this together. And then my, and then here's what's the, the, the coolest thing about this entire thing, which speaks to what you were saying about change and that you can change things with your dollar. I believe a dollar is more powerful than a mere boat. I, Dude, I say that almost every episode, bro. On this. Yeah, you should, yeah. Well, then yeah. I'm going to steal that from you. <laughs> it's, Dude, it's true. It's so true. Your wallet is stronger than your boat. And people are like, wow, he doesn't understand our, our how the world set up. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Money is the root of all evil, but it's also the root of freedom for people if you, if you invest it the right way. Yeah. You uh, just got to shift that 2% of how we think about, you know, money and, and consumerism and anything like you said that two percent is dude it's two percent of a global 20 trillion economy is a lot of money massive shit you know, can happen you know what's funny if you think about if, if you do a 360 on something a 180 108 i'm just doing this for fun for our visualization yes 180 degree turn that that's going backwards <laughs> that's actually going backwards if you think about it and 360 is going the exact same way yeah, just end up where you started. <laughs> you just end up where you started. And so I'm like, two degrees. If you go walk today and you pick a tree that's a mile away and you say, I'm going to go straight to it, but then you change. Mm. And then with two degrees, you change your trajectory two degrees. Walk that mile and then see the distance. Mm -hmm. That right there was the growth. I want to end on, we talked a little bit about the future, but I want to, but I wanted to end on sort of where where are we at today with sort of clean cause the, the company and the brand in three to five years. Like you don't have to share all what's in, what's in the what's in the growth plan, obviously. But talk about where where you'd want to be, right? As a company at that point. Yeah. You talk about transparency. You talk about growth and scale. There's there's some product line stuff, revenue type stuff, right? 
how do we get statistics better? How do we get transparency better in the, the give back model, right? As well as, as, no, no, as ab- the, the effectiveness I, of it. Absolutely. So we, we did speak a lot about that. It's bubbles in a can without the integrity of a cause or to give back. So if we want other people to do that, we want to do a proof of concept that shows and demonstrates the different mm. uh, components that show that. And so they buy into it. We shouldn't be threatened by people. We shouldn't feel that way. If we are, we need to check ourselves and understand why. Mm-hmm. Because if our desire is for change, why is it even with just change within addiction? And so when I speak about transparency of the model and fulfilling the vision, which is what I'm now having the opportunity to do, because I've hired awesome people that are smarter than I to take over the wheel of shit I shouldn't have been driving. You know, that's the truth. But you, sure. you, you survive until you thrive. That's why I call it survival of the fittest, you know? Um, and so, you know, you, you are going... So here's the quick, a couple of years ago, we, uh, we started getting donations, checks from people from across the country. Mm. And they were like, dude, I see what you're doing. And my brother passed away and this and this. We got offered $50,000 and oh. we did not take it. We did not take it because we did not want to commingle funds because we were a for profit yeah. company. Yep. That said, we can't move fast enough to generate enough money to be able to really go after this cause because it takes time, you know, and I'm fucking impatient. Yep. So we said nonprofit. Mm. Um, that was always part of the vision that we started to dump money in there that will be used for other initiatives. Um, but so the yin yang of the business model was product and purpose. The nonprofit will function as a trustee of sorts with an independent board of directors mm. and advisors that are specialists within business, psychology, addiction, you know, data, everything, subject matter experts to attack the problem on the for a nonprofit side with the same tenacity and funding and in the really mentality as we do the for profit. And so what that will do is every dollar that's generated in profit that the 50, excuse me, the 50% of the profits that are generated will go to that nonprofit. Gotcha. They, they will facilitate the allocation of the funding, the transparency. They will track the efficacy. Mm, huge. They will have, and, and, and so there's a buffer in the middle. They will work together, but they will be independent for clarity's sake. One, one thing to really uh, mention about that too is not one dollar that's profit generated by for the cause in the for profit will be used for anything other than sober living scholarships. Yep. It will not be used to fund executive directors or big salaries or any shit. I'm not saying those people can't make big salaries. They can, sure. but but it will be a sustained on its own funding aside from yep. this. When you buy the can and I'm telling you, we got a plan yep. and I'm saying that that 50% is going there. It's not going 50% and then being cut to 25% because someone wants yep. to drive away. Ladies, it's going over there and their number one goal is a trustee to preserve and fulfill the efficacy of our give back and our mission. And so to me, that is the model that can scale. Mm -hmm. And that's the model that America and the world could believe in. And and that's a model that after we get our first one done, it's on. Mm. It's the beginning. So we are building the relationship with America, with the consumers. We're doing it differently. We're not doing it perfect, but we're committed to fix it when we fuck up and we are open. And so it's just exciting time uh, in the midst of all of the insanity in our world today to be able to, to be in a position to have purpose. And, and, and so freaking grateful, dude. I can't even tell you. I'm insanely grateful. All right, brother. Well, again, thank you so much, man. I, I really, I've been following the journey with the company for, for a while, man. I'm so, I'm so glad to see it mature and, and hopefully continue to scale right across America and hopefully across the world, man. Dude, thanks for, for trying to push it out there to, and to people and, and without you guys too. It, we, it's, I'm just sitting in my house behind a, a Zoom, you know? So thank you guys for being a part of the solution. That's, that's the virtuous cycle that you just, you just entered. So we appreciate it.